So we have some insane news when it comes to Xbox Game Pass and how profitable it is. We have Phil Spencer, the CEO of Microsoft at Gaming, talking about this growth on not just console, but PC and cloud and mobile. There's a lot of information here, and it really shows and paints a different picture of what people should be looking at when it comes to Game Pass. Let's get into everything because there's so much information here. All right, so you know the drill. If you like the video, hit that like button and that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified on future videos, hit that small little bell icon. And if you want to go that extra mile to support the channel, hit that join button. All the support is greatly appreciated. All right, so I just want to get into this because Phil Spencer has been going on interviews for a little while now. And mostly what he's been talking about hasn't been really game related. It's always been about the Activision Blizzard deal and how it's going to go through, what they think is happening, what they want to do with those franchises, and of course, buying new studios and things like that. But for the last year, there hasn't been that much talk about Microsoft's Game Pass, aka Xbox Game Pass. That is probably the biggest subscription thing in gaming right now and probably the best subscription that I have currently. And this service has been around for a little while now. And I want to just get into what the article has to say, what Phil Spencer has to say, and talk about what it all means. Here's what's said. Microsoft says Xbox Game Pass is profitable as it sees subscription growth slow. Microsoft Gaming CEO Phil Spencer has revealed that the company's Xbox Game Pass subscription service is already profitable, speaking at the Wall Street Journal's Tech Live conference. Spencer also revealed that Xbox Game Pass is around 15% of Microsoft's overall Xbox content and services revenue. Spencer says he now expects Xbox Game Pass to stay at around 10 to 50% of Microsoft's Xbox content and services revenue and that it's profitable for us. Game Pass, as an overall part of our content and services revenue, is probably 15%, says Spencer. I don't think it gets bigger than that. I think the overall revenue grows so 15% of a bigger number, but we don't have this future where I think 50 to 70% of our revenue comes from subscriptions. This is something that I wanted to talk about because a lot of people have always said that Game Pass is the all be all and that they want all their profits to come from that. When that's not the reality. Xbox has a lot of different avenues of getting games. They get it from third party publishers that make games on there and they get 30% from it. They get it from microtransactions within their own games and not to mention third party games like Fortnite, Apex Legends and games like that. Not to mention they have a lot of money coming in from just their first party games going into Game Pass or people buying them on Steam. And I think that's what people are losing sight on. I, for one, have been one of those people that thought Game Pass was the one thing that they're pushing. But when you stop and take a look at everything, that's not the case. They are really pushing PC gaming and really pushing mobile gaming to a nth degree. I can't believe how much they're doing that to the point where, as a gamer, somebody that is a console gamer and a PC gamer, I've been jumping on the PC a lot more because of Microsoft and Xbox. I've been going on the PC gaming app for Xbox Game Pass and playing a lot of my games there because it just works really nice. Not to mention, if I do want to play my game on my Xbox, I can do that when I transfer over and all the cloud saves just seamlessly work. So I find it very, very nice to have that option. But most of all, I think that it's great that Xbox is growing Game Pass and that their revenues are just going to go higher. So that 50% is just going to become a bigger number for them. So they're not completely banking on Game Pass, but it's a big part of what they do. And I want to get back into the article and talk about how rare this is that Microsoft is giving us these numbers. It's a rare insight into Microsoft's Xbox console and Game Pass subscription businesses. Particularly, as Spencer suggests, Xbox Game Pass won't dominate Microsoft's gaming revenue. There's a reason for that, as there are only so many Xbox console owners that could subscribe to the service. We're seeing incredible growth on PC. On console, I've seen growth slow down, mainly because at some point you've reached everybody on console that wants to subscribe, explained Spencer. And this is something I have talked about multiple times on this channel, multiple times on RDX, and multiple times in private parties with friends and people that I know in the community. I have said that I think Game Pass on a console has reached its limit. Now, do I think a lot of people joining the console this generation are going to subscribe to Game Pass? Of course. But so far, from what I've understood, I think, personally, there's about 100 to 150 million console people out there. Now, I don't think all of them are going to be going to Xbox, obviously, 
But when you look at the 20 to 25 million, even 30 million, if I'm being generous, that's how many people I think are going to subscribe to Game Pass on the console because there's just not that many gamers. And Phil Spencer even admits that saying that they've probably reached everybody on the console that wants to subscribe. And at some point that's going to happen. So where do they pivot? Where do they grow? That's where all this PC and mobile gaming comes into place because I don't see Xbox as just a console anymore. I see it as an ecosystem and I see if you're a PC gamer playing Xbox games on your PC, you're an Xbox gamer through and through. So if you want to talk about Xbox, you can because that's what Xbox wants you to do. And let's get into the article to see just how much Game Pass on PC is growing. Microsoft just revealed that it saw PC Game Pass subscriptions increase by 159% year over year and that more than 20 million people have streamed games on Xbox Cloud Gaming, up from 10 million earlier this year. PC looks like an obvious growth area for Microsoft, but there's always mobile too. Microsoft is building an Xbox mobile gaming store to take on Apple and Google, but it will face challenges in growing Xbox Game Pass on platforms like iOS, where it's currently impossible to offer rival stores and even cloud gaming apps. Spencer acknowledged those challenges, but he thinks Microsoft is playing the long game on a mobile Xbox store. All right, I want to get into this because let's be real. I really do think that a lot of people that have Xboxes have been playing on PC a lot lately. I've seen it through the chat, I've seen it through a lot of people I know that they're loving their console, but the complimentary games that they get on PC Game Pass is insane. If you're paying for Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you get all those games right there. So why wouldn't you use it? I understand some people have the $10 version where they just get Game Pass on their console or they just get Game Pass on the PC. I get those people and I understand that, hey, that's your prerogative. But as somebody that does play on all platforms, and I truly do mean all platforms, I have a PS5, Xbox Series X, a PC, and a Steam Deck. I play everywhere. And I also have a Switch that I've been jumping into some games on there too. I have been just enjoying gaming. That's the whole point. And seeing that there's a bunch of growth on PC Game Pass makes me happy because they're gonna invest more games into that. And let's just be honest with ourselves. Xbox has been bringing out more games on PC than they have the console. That's just a fact. They've been dropping exclusive games like Warhammer Total War, a bunch of other games that they've announced at their E3 event where they're going to have these games come to PC and the PC Game Pass subscription to entice people to maybe get off Steam and join that Xbox ecosystem. And then you throw in that Riot deal that they have that's gonna be kicking off next year. And trust me, there's a lot of stuff coming to Xbox Game Pass on PC that it's kind of insane. So the growth that they're gonna see is going to be from that avenue. Now, where does the Activision Blizzard deal come into play? Well, that's where King, the mobile developer, comes roaring in because they can get a lot, and I mean a lot of people subscribing to Game Pass through the mobile device. And I don't think if you just want to be mobile, I don't think it's going to be 10 bucks. I don't think it's going to be 15 bucks. I think they're going to have a different mobile tier for mobile games that is a little cheaper that they can get people joining into the Xbox ecosystem. And it's going to be for mobile centric gamers that can get a bunch of points and a bunch of stuff they can use for microtransactions all through the Xbox app and that storefront for mobile games. I know that's a little weird and I haven't really talked about that, but it's just an idea that I've had that I think Xbox might be looking into and Microsoft might be looking into. But for me, the big thing is, is that they've kind of reached their limit of what the console could give them. I think they get a few million here and there as people join with the Xbox Series S, but overall, I think the 159% growth on PC is going to be the thing they focus on the most. I think that is where they're going to put their, a lot of their focus on for the next year. And then mobile is going to be the long-term deal where they talk about making games there and bringing all the cloud games there and make it more pristine. That's the long game. That's going to take a lot of time. And they've talked about that where they're talking about making an Xbox mobile gaming store that competes with Apple and Google. That is going to be something that they need to strike and do a long-term plan on. Probably a massive project plan that's going to be about 10 to 15 years long. Now, what do I think is going to happen in the immediate future, aka the next five years to seven years? It's going to be console and PC focused, mainly PC over console because they're going to get a lot of games on there and that's where the most growth is going to happen. But the foundation is going to be those console subscribers that continuously get these games. So I think there's a lot of parts moving in this strategy. I think Xbox and Phil Spencer have a lot of things going on and they also talked about hiking prices and a bunch of other stuff, but I want to tackle that in a whole other video. So stay tuned for that because I'm going to jump right into that and talk about what I 
think of it if xbox should even do that because there's a lot of information there also and i couldn't cover it in just one video so i'll be going into that because i don't like what he had to say about it but we'll see and i'll make a video on that but I want to know what you think about this. Do you think the growth of Game Pass and it being profitable was a shock to you? Do you see people on Twitter and all over the place saying that Game Pass isn't profitable when Phil Spencer and Microsoft have said, hey, it's profitable? I want to know everything about that. What do you think about it? Why do you think Xbox is profitable? And do you think PC Game Pass is going to grow even more next year when they start dropping these games? Or do you think the console is going to grow even more once they start dropping first party games? Go down below and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please hit that subscribe button and that like button to support us out the channel more than you know. And give me a follow on Twitter at Zocker87. I'm always on there talking games and sharing my latest videos. Plus, I love interacting with everyone there. So get on Twitter and let's talk about gaming. Also, follow me on Xbox Live. My gamer tag is Zocker87, just like my channel name. See what games I'm playing and let's compete in achievements for the month. Okay, so I've been going absolutely bonkers on Gotham Knights. I know everybody's hating the game, but to be quite honest with you, a lot of people that I know that are actually playing it, that have played the game completely, or have just jumped into it lately, have loved it. I'm one of those people, I can't get enough of how good Gotham Knights is. Trust me, I'm enjoying every part about it, every character is different, every voice actor is amazing, they've killed it with the story, the open world is really cool, I'm enjoying a lot of the side activities, everything about the game, I'm just enjoying as a gamer. And I'm trying to get through it and get all the stuff on there, I'm trying to get pretty much every achievement i'm going through it because i'm playing it on steam on the pc because i want 60 plus frames which i'm getting on the story missions about 120 to 130 frames and in the open world about 60 70 to 80 frames now as i'm enjoying that i am looking at god of war ragnarok so i'm gonna play gotham knights as much as i can get everything done probably beat the game and then move over to God of War Ragnarok and enjoy that because that is one of my favorite franchises and I get to play it on the PS5 and I'm looking forward to that. It looks insane from all the previews. But let me know what you're playing. Are you playing something on your Xbox, your PS5, your PC, your Steam Deck, your Switch? What are you playing on? Let me know what games you're playing on, any new games that you ran into. Because I'm really looking forward to talking about what everybody's playing. Because I want to talk about more about the gaming side of things. Because I'm really enjoying a lot of games right now. So go down below and let me know. Because that's what we're here for. It's to talk games. And that's all for now. Thanks for watching. And until next time, remember, enjoy your gaming. Later.